Hi everyone, uh, I was really struggling with uh, looking at a lot of different investments that I had, um, very small ones, but uh, you know, under even ten dollars sometimes. Uh, but uh, you know, I was looking at Argentina, and there was, uh, you know, I've been noticing there's been some problems down there. Um, I've actually visited Buenos Aires. Um, I didn't particularly enjoy it, um, but uh, looking back, um, I realized that. Uh, there is some things I needed to learn about uh, Argentina, and I kind of wanted to just review the entire economy. Um, one thing in particular is that uh, if you're thinking of going to Antarctica, I know this is about uh, uh, economics, but in general, uh, there's a little city down here on the tip, and you would basically have to go through Argentina um, to get there. And I'm not even necessarily thinking of going to Antarctica, but I've definitely been studying it in terms of is the earth alive this thing down here kind of looks like a brain to me so uh, anyway so argentina became a pretty interesting uh, kind of connecting point um and kind of a uh, parallel with if you look up here in north america kind of where i was living up here in idaho similar kind of uh landscape uh kind of colder but on the south southern tip of south america um, so uh, I was I'm more familiar with Brazil and Rio up in here, Sao Paulo, um, and actually I was very surprised about Uruguay. Um, I really wanted to add Uruguay to this economic uh, discussion today, but uh, there's just a ton of stuff um, to discuss. So uh, primarily we're just going to focus on Argentina here um, and kind of put that within the context of Brazil and the rest of Latin America. Um, and I just put together a ton of numbers here to kind of look at. Uh, I'm going to turn off the international borders um, because really, uh, although we're studying Argentina, we want to kind of think about this in terms of like what's going on as you kind of leave leave the main part of South America so and Latin America. So most of Latin America really is kind of like uh, in this part, Central America, and also uh, Brazil, um, and then uh, Colombia and uh, Venezuela, of course. Um, and then even Florida is kind of pretty uh, Latino. Um, there's a lot of people speaking Spanish there um, and uh, Mexico, right? So, um, but for me personally, um, coming from the north uh, part of Idaho here, I was particularly interested in Argentina because I was just like, well, uh, you know, it's similar to uh, where I'm from. So yet on the South Pole. Um, and certainly I'm very interested in studying more of like why this looks like a brain and uh, if the earth's alive and kind of indigenous culture and how that would kind of transition uh, from maybe indigenous culture in the Amazon um, all the way maybe through Chile or even Argentina. So interestingly enough, as we start to look at the economy of Argentina, um, one of the problems is I, I came in uh, to Sao Paulo and then went over to Rio and then went back and then kind of my passport was running out and I had to leave the country um, to uh, make sure I kept my passport valid. And I went to uh, Buenos Aires and I wanted to see the falls here. I was a little bit afraid about going into the Amazon and jungle and uh, just uh, bugs and all that kind of stuff. But got to Uruguay. I was very impressed with Uruguay. Then by the time I got to Argentina, really the landscape and everything changed. And I really wanted to try to just see Chile, which was kind of a mistake. So I took a bus and didn't quite make it all the way to Chile. But uh, but certainly I had I learned a lot uh, in Argentina um, about culture there. Um, I was really surprised at how fun the culture was outside of Buenos Aires, believe it or not, um, like places in Montevideo and uh, some little small town that I had a lot of fun in um, here. But uh I didn't make it to Chile, so I really remember that, and I really remember kind of being very curious about this Argentine culture. You know, like, why was it so successful in the past? What was the economic troubles? And uh, even comparing that to Brazil, and so this is very macroeconomic, and I wish I had more microeconomic stories and interesting things to say, but, uh, but interestingly, uh, from a, a map perspective, uh, I added a couple of cool maps here. You can download these, these are GeoTIFF files, or you can just download them as KMZ files. I'm, I'm not sure exactly. Just search for them. Um, and uh, you can kind of see. So this here is a population map. Um, so uh, certainly very interesting and very different than China and India. But you can see here is this bright light is Sao Paulo. This is Rio. And then heading down into here, this is getting towards Argentina, right? So this little spot here is actually 
bonus areas. So there's quite a number of people there. Um, I try to get this as most detailed as possible, and for some reason, these uh, Google Earth doesn't let you do it as detailed as the actual data set is, but it's good enough to see. So here is another one, and this is the actual Earth at night. So you can kind of see the relative lights here. Now, it's really important to realize that uh, Buenos Aires is a very normal looking city um, from space. So you can kind of see how it kind of comes out here, these little um, pathways all kind of heading into Buenos Aires makes it kind of a boring spot definitely different in Rio here and then some of that kind of stuff here in Sao Paulo so just to think about the economics in terms of house after house style of economics and certainly it got more interesting as heading out to Santiago but I would not recommend it gets very dry here so interesting thing I have really been studying the economics here but we're gonna look at the climate for a second so Right there is Buenos Aires. You can kind of see it's same kind of climate pretty much, um, but I would say it really feels different. Like once you get this far south to Buenos Aires, the land is just a lot flatter and it's just hard to explain, but it's something feels wrong in my opinion. When I got there, it looked like the city was something of the past um, to a large extent, but this gets a lot more warmer here and stuff. Uh, but in general, this is the actual satellite view, and then you can kind of see the climate just to give you an idea. So economically, the thing that really surprised me is that there is a lot of agriculture. I'm going to just show you some of the other pictures in a moment. Um, but to get started, uh, from an economic standpoint, um, the climate, in my opinion, I don't even like to invest in certain places if the climate isn't just right or they have uh, pollution problems. And certainly, Buenos Aires is getting to that point. Um, it's a ginormous city. So if you looked at this uh, population, kind of see the population here, and I can even, yeah, I better make it a little darker there so you can kind of see the population. But if I add this, this kind of adds on to the population. So that's the nightlight. So you can kind of see some of the details within the population. So uh, I'll switch here to a lot of other data, but I just wanted to kind of get the overall perspective first before uh, there's going to be just a ton of details here. <laughs> falling uh, economically but it's nice to just have a feel and make yourself really comfortable with understanding yeah this is amazon and it's just totally different and there's not a whole lot of people there and basically bonus Aires is a big section of the population here so we're gonna dive in here to uh, a lot of details i hope you really like it uh, so i'm gonna kind of start with this one i was gonna start with something else but uh, this is the World Bank. I always use this just to look at GDP per capita numbers over time. And man, uh, I, I don't even know if these numbers are correct, right? They don't match up with the other data points that we're going to look at. But you can see around $15,000 per year in Argentina. And then something happened here. So this is kind of what caused this study that I'm doing today, right? Going from $15,000 per year to $10,000 a year, you're losing almost a third of your uh, salary something bad happened right and it started about 2017 so we're trying to discover and figure out essentially what the problem is and what the solution is by looking at all this economic data i'm not sure if we're going to get there but uh but certainly we're going to go through almost everything and maybe you'll have a better idea than me even about what the problem was um so i got a number of data sets here um i took a lot of this data here from uh Wikipedia and kind of graphed a lot of it myself. This is the Harvard Atlas of Economic Complexity, and we're probably going to start with that. Um, but uh, from a population standpoint, it might be nice just to look at this. Um, economics isn't always about money. Sometimes it's about how many people you have. So you can see Brazil, about 50% of all of Latin America. Now remember, on this graph of the picture, Latin America includes Mexico and these other areas. I believe this is not really including everything. Maybe this is missing Mexico. I'm not even sure. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, so basically the population. Brazil is huge. Um, and I'm not sure why we don't have Mexico on this. But uh, I may have another graph that will show uh, Mexico. I think this is including Mexico. But this is on the uh, GDP per capita. So we'll go into that uh, probably next. Let me just pause this. Sorry. Um, so I'm going to just keep this a little bit messy, um, all in one graph, just so maybe you can pause it and take a look at it in the details. 
Uh, but certainly you can see Mexico here. So GDP, this is graphed according to GDP, right? But it's not the same. Like, although you're making more, you actually have way more people in Brazil, right? So this GDP per capita, you actually can see it's kind of going inversely proportional to the GDP, right? So, uh, and I got some way more details on this in a second. But uh, in general, you can see, uh, and this is a log graph. So certainly if I were to change this to a linear graph, and I think this is the linear. So this is a linear graph, right? So you can see that on a log graph, wow, okay, Brazil really shows way more money. But uh, so basically there, Argentina is kind of down here, uh, even significantly below Mexico, right? So uh, certainly as we think about Argentina, um, even the landscape uh, is a lot like Mexico. Um, so you might wonder, well, okay, if it's basically the same size as Mexico, the same climate, or well, not necessarily the same climate, but uh, but same level of dryness, let's say. Um, and then here's Colombia, right? About like Argentina. And actually, Colombia is one of my favorite ones in Latin America, just a really interesting country uh, because it's so close to the Amazon. And some of the temperatures up in the mountains get pretty good. Um, and then Chile here. So that graph, as you can see, does not look anything like this graph. So I did a log graph. The reason I did that is because you can kind of see that Mexico on a log graph is about the same as Brazil, right? Um, but certainly not in terms of raw dollars, but it's just easier to see. So you can see Argentina and Colombia, and these rest kind of in this group. So you can kind of group things a little bit better. Maybe that's not very helpful, but um, so here is a log graph again of the uh, Latin America GDP per person. Um, so here you start to get the salaries. Um, and I think Argentina had said on that last one around 10,000. So this number matches up with that number from the World Bank. Uh, but you can kind of see, you know, there's certainly a couple of these countries uh, huh, right here Uruguay, which is right across from Argentina, and Panama a little bit ahead here. Um, and actually, this is a log graph, so it could be quite a number ahead. But um, and then uh, the Bahamas and these kind of like small, interesting islands uh, making quite a lot. And then a gap here for Haiti, which really makes me concerned. Um, but there's a lot of ways to look at this. Here's kind of the pie chart. So you can see GDP per person, relatively speaking. Um, and you can kind of see um, the Bahamas quite a bit doing pretty good there. Um, so that's kind of a little fact to know about. And uh, again, here is a log graph showing a GDP per country. So I got, I'll probably give a link to this so you can take a look at all the data yourself, but it's nice just to see it to start with. Uh, and before we get into this, it might be interesting just to see, um, you know, like, so why is certain places or certain people wealthy in Latin America? Here's kind of a graph showing uh, certain people. You can see this guy in Mexico is actually the richest guy in Latin America and probably by quite a bit. I could do a log graph of this. Um, maybe I can show you how to do that right away. Um, so all you got to do is do log scale, and then it kind of changes it so you can see a little more details in here. So there's kind of like this second half of people and these guys up in here and kind of a middle group here and, and this so-and-so. And then it shows the uh, uh, different uh, industries, and then the link is up here. Um, so you might want to have access to this and just take a look if you're interested. Uh, so next, we're going to look at the export. So what I did is under settings, I did gross. You can also do net, um, and it kind of gives a different perspective. The reason I like net is because it's kind of a profit. So uh, gross is just total sales, uh, but you can see how important food is in Argentina in particular. And under these visualizations, uh, the link is kind of complex, but you can just look for Harvard Atlas of Economic Complexity. Um, and there's basically imports and exports. You can see imports look pretty diverse. And because exports are not very diverse, that really gives me a concern. Um, so basically food is a huge, huge part of their economy, right? And even uh, travel and transportation. Now I'm gonna change this to gross and you can see a little more detail. So travel and tourism, kind of what got me looking into the details a little bit more, just because, hey, I mean, in the far, far future, um, you know, essentially uh, being good to the environment, it seems like this Arctic environment, Argentina has a lot of responsibility um, and 
connecting with Chile, and, and it's, it's just a complicated overall picture of uh, what's going on. So this one I really like a lot. So it makes it really simple just to see. So here's Argentina. You can see their biggest exporter of $11 billion is to Brazil. That should make sense to you. Um, however, that means Brazil is really dependent on Argentina. Um, and about uh, maybe a, a third of that um, to China. And uh, about the same exports going from going to China and America. And then you can kind of see some interesting places like Algeria, South Africa. Uh, I personally noticed that the flights going to and from Africa are ridiculously expensive, even from Rio. They got to get that figured out. Um, and uh, certainly Africa and South America are, look like a puzzle here that need to be uh, working together. Um, and uh, But yeah, so this is cool to see. Now you can see on imports, so you can see they're uh, pretty heavily dependent, about $8 billion from, and almost $10 billion from the United States. And you can see even importing from Germany. So uh, this graph shows you over time, um, and that's on imports, but really we want to see exports. So exports makes it very obvious that agriculture is super important here. Um, and then this global share map I always like to look at gives me a very clear picture of what's happening over time. So you see fairly stagnant economy, right? Well, not necessarily stagnant, but staying stable um, with the exception of this one, right? And I believe, I'm not even sure which one this is. So I think it might be uh, chemicals. Yeah, so, uh, and then at the top here, this is agriculture. So certainly the economy was doing good. And then you remember 2017, well, the agriculture started a crash even before that. So maybe it might have been 2011. So we can't quite see. And back in here, we can see 2011. Aha, there's an early sign and then a sudden crash. And that seems to go back to agriculture. And I was really happy to discover this, but also what do we do about it? 2008, you kind of see GDP per capita. There's some problem right in here. Um, and I did notice that... Uh, the economy is pretty heavily dependent was certain parts on the technology industry. When I visited there, I was shocked to see a big, gigantic building with on the top of it an American technology company. Um, but uh, anyway, so you can see that after 2002, a huge increase. So that was probably just great. And they were feeling great about it. And it's up until about here, right? So... Anyway, so you can kind of see, this is good just to check. So you can see that uh, chemical industry, or that might be stone, vehicles, could be vehicles. Um, but, uh, uh, and you can see minerals kind of going down here and so on. Um, but uh, overall, uh, this is great little map. It's kind of hard to see sometimes, so you can change the specificity of this. Or even down here, you can click on specific industries. Uh, like if you wanted to isolate it just to these guys, you can kind of see. Uh -huh. So uh, anyway, so animal feed and, and so on. Um, and uh, can hopefully turn this off and bring it back. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, this is kind of the general idea of the economy. Um, so next, I'm going to try to dive into some of the details. Uh, so there's a lot of stock exchanges. It's really kind of surprised me. It's made it complicated. Um, and in some ways, uh, by consolidating it into, uh, say, like bringing Argentina companies into the American Stock Exchange or the other way around, it's kind of made it complicated for me to uh, isolate what the companies are in Argentina and who's doing what. Um, but uh, you can basically see this is a list here. So what I did is I grabbed a screener here and you can edit it and you can select Argentina and I did mid cap, large cap. And then I uh, kind of wanted to see what the result of that screener was. So unfortunately there's several different kinds of screeners um, and they're giving me different results, uh, but approximately the same. So here is a trading view screener um, and I sorted this by uh, income our net income, and you can see these are supposed to be profitable companies. Um, you could also do um, by, uh, I should probably change this to, uh, let's see if I can do this. Uh, anyway, you can do market cap, and I think the, the one on uh, 
the other one we we're looking at is uh, is the market cap sorted by market cap. So these are both sorted market cap, and you can see Medtronic, PLC, Citigroup, Apple Computer. So this is what makes it frustrating is that uh, a lot of these American companies are listed. So this is like the ticker symbol .ba for Buenos Aires probably. And uh, I haven't actually directly traded these. I've used them with ADRs, so a little bit different. Um, I haven't really discussed it, but we can talk about it if you want to text me. Um, and I uh, certainly would love to hear your ideas on what you think is interesting. So uh, I'm not really looking for investing. I would just invest in the uh, American versions of these. Um, but uh, there are some details here. Like you start to see Banco, this... Uh, Bradasco and I and I'm pretty sure it's a Brazilian company, but maybe it's uh, Argentinian. So there's uh, just certain. Uh, it's my uh, brother texting me, but uh, but anyway, there's a lot of different things here, so it's hard. Essentially, it's hard to isolate where are the Argentine companies. I'm not really gonna say which one I'm investing in, um, but I am trying to, um, and uh, you know, so you can kind of go through. And what I would do is sort it by market cap or this is a little easier to use sometimes and see if you can kind of sort it, you know, if you're interested in my employees or uh, what I was doing is looking at the income statement and looking for profitability. So you just sort this by uh, profitability and it uh, looks like Citigroup of all the companies. So if you were in Argentina and you were trading on their exchange, basically these guys are the top ones. So, uh, and actually I have tried to invest in a couple of these. I think this bank here, um, but uh, just for fun, um, not putting a whole lot of money, you know, like it says here, this was in, this would be in pesos, so we got to study what the conversion factor is. So the next part of this, uh, we're going to look at all of that. So basically, uh, like in America, you have the S&P 500. Um, in, in Argentina, you have this Merville Argentina Index, and I'm not even sure if that's the, the for sure one. So I put this on multiple graphs here and multiple, um, and it's all log graph to make it look like this and nice. So we're looking at a lot of data here. Um, we're actually looking at it um, for about 15 years of data. Um, and on the left is the index. So this orange line is their main index. Um, now uh, the uh, blue one, Oh, let me get this right. I am very sorry about that. So this is actually the S&P 500. I'm sorry. So this one is S&P 500. And this uh, light blue one is actually, that's the Argentina index. And then a red line is kind of the moving average. Um, and I might even change this moving average really quick to just be a 12 for a full 12 months. Let's do three months. Uh, better do 12. So I'm gonna do 12 months moving average for 12. So that's gonna change this line a little bit. Who knows if it, yeah, it just moved a little bit. So, and then right here is the exchange rate. So this is hard to understand, um, but the exchange rate, um, has been causing Argentina a major problem, right? So basically, uh, this one right here is, says about 60 to 1, right? So this is really where we get the frustrating problems for their economics, right? So basically, the exchange rate down here was like 3 to 1, and today it's like 60 to 1. That's a major problem, right? So good thing for Americans, terrible thing for Argentinians. And certainly it would help both countries to get back to reality and look down here, right? It was basically three to one for a long time. And then it went up to this new level, about three or four and then five, and then just kind of kept going through some tough problems. And I put that on one graph. So here you can see, and I'm going to remove. So this graph is the just for the uh, currency and you can add that with this so there's certain points kind of inflection points you can start to see certainly their economy went way down doesn't really show up shows a little blip right here so the currency so actually the stock market started to show the problem first right so here you can see 
Yep, that's going down and then way down. And the currency was staying steady, but man, so if your stock market starts to go down, good reminder for S&P 500, man, our stock market starts to tank. Well, the currency might be in trouble too. So, uh, but uh, basically when this goes up, that that's meaning bad. So, uh, but basically you can see the moving average and uh, I don't know why I could, didn't change this, but uh, uh, it's, it should be just 12 for 12 months. So you can see uh, quite a bit above the moving average. That means it just keeps getting worse and worse. And anytime it gets close here, that means they've figured something out um, with their economy. So, and we could also add a moving average to this and so on. But just so many data points here. Um, I would say, you know, each of these peaks. So what you could do is if you add this, um, you could do a vertical line, change the color. I just like pink. And you can start doing these little vertical lines on certain areas that you think are particularly interesting. And it shows you the date down here. And then this is kind of, let's say we want to do a solid line. And we can just say right here, you know, they finally figured something out in the economy, right? So like for sure by there. So in February 2009, but this was actually a global crash, right? So 2008, but by February, so we can kind of compare that. We can even add S&P 500 to the same one. So if we want to do S&P 500, oops, S&P 500. And uh, of course it doesn't show up. I gotta do S&P 500, probably space. Okay, so SPX, I don't know, for some reason SPX maybe goes back further, but uh, let's try this one. Oh, God, so I think I messed it up. But uh, basically, the reason this isn't really showing anything is because I got to do a uh, put it on a log graph. So I kind of probably get re added here SP 500. I think when I do same scale, new, new price and scale, then it will change it a little bit better. So now it's on the same, on a, it's got its own scale, or I could do it by percentage, all of them. You might. Actually, I prefer doing it by that. If I'm really looking at the details, I want to put them all on the same percent and actually even align these guys, those little tips, to see exactly what's going on. So now we have the S&P. So this guy right here, that's S&P, and you can kind of see this was also a big point for the S&P 500 on February 2nd, that particular day. And But the difference is right in here, right? So in this point, Argentina actually started to go down first, uh, before the American economy, and then the American economy fi finalized its decision there right around September 1st. And we can actually just put a little line there and kind of maybe put a green point right there as a kind of interesting thought. So basically, that was you know, the Argentine economy still going down, and you can see currency is relatively flat, so that's good because we know it's not really a currency problem. But it was something with some of the companies. And uh, I'm not sure how to get the whole list. We could probably do a screener and get the whole list for uh, Argentina. Um, there's a bunch of other lists here. You can do a uh, list of banks, shows, and stock exchanges. And then sometimes they give you uh, a little bit more detail. So here's, uh, here's uh, a by GDP and so on. So, uh, but in general, uh, it's. I hope you really enjoyed this study. Um, there's a lot of information. I'm gonna switch back here to uh, um, the image here. So, so, uh, so yeah. I mean, so we were basically looking at Argentina here, and uh, you know the economics. Um, you know, it's really hard to say. Um, you know, that's that's why you kind of want to look at uh, the population. You know, so um, and. Uh, you know, just looking at the population map, you can kind of see here and kind of make it a little bit dimmer and you kind of start to see. So basically Argentina, you know, it's got a lot of people down here. Um, it's certainly, um, there's a river running up through here and whatnot, but, uh, uh, and let me just do a zoom in here just really quick into Buenos Aires so you can start to see some what's going on, right? So here we are uh, kind of doing our last kind of economic study of Argentina, right? So the part that I was got frustrated with was that uh, strange kind of see these like really boring commute routes into 
Buenos Aires. That kind of scared me a lot relative to Brazil being much more interesting. And, man, get up into Colombia and Venezuela gets even more interesting, but it's also very hot. So temperature gets to be pretty nice, sir. You know, uh, down here we can do a climate map. So you can kind of see this, some of this climate. Um, and it certainly changes. And it certainly there's a place called Porto Alegre, I think right in right in there somewhere. There it is, Porto Alegre. So if you're taking a bus, it's kind of nice to take a bus just to get the feel. It wasn't totally worth it, but certainly the bus. Um, and then I took like a boat all the way to our uh, to Buenos Aires from Montevideo. And actually, man, Montevideo is, is like, in my opinion, it's the key. So I, I think the pollution in the water and uh, some of the problems just with bonus areas there's a lot of there's a lot of run off in through here by the time you get to Montevideo and it's kind of interesting because it's just its own separate country here so you can kind of see this is the border line um, and it's kind of mysterious uh, I would love to understand why this all just isn't interconnected but uh, you know different people and situations so uh, but basically, as you kind of look at this here, and I can turn off this, we're not going to use that. So you can kind of see uh, this is uh, Argentina, right? So certainly Patagonia and a lot of the stuff that we're heading out towards uh, Antarctica. And I'm, I'm still kind of trying to analyze this in terms of, hey, you know, do I really want to head down this way? And gosh, this seems pretty dry. It's, uh, But a lot of this might even be like California. So who knows? Um and actually, let's just check that really quick, kind of compare climates. Um, so if we add the climate back on here, um, right here, you can, and we zoom out a little bit, you can kind of see what that is like relative to American climates. So, and I would say that's pretty correct. You know, it's about like the Midwest but uh, something doesn't seem quite right here. So I think that's a slightly lighter shade, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, yeah, so I don't really trust these numbers totally. So this, I mean, certainly this area, this is like Rio and Sao Paulo. That felt a lot like Florida temperature-wise, but certainly not um, otherwise. So you can kind of see there's a really rainy spot there um, and so on. So... It's hard to say. Um, I would say it did feel pretty dry, started to feel drier, and you can kind of see that without the climate map in Buenos Aires. There just something felt, I guess I was coming from a very wet environment down to pretty dry, and it kind of happened pretty fast. It felt like it happened pretty fast on the bus. But then again, I fell asleep on the bus and was tired, and everyone couldn't speak English around me. <laughs> it was strange. So, uh, But you can kind of see just what's going on. So be nice to get an economic map uh, GDP per capita per like every detail in here but not quite there yet um, but uh, there's a lot of people that do like to move down to southern Brazil um, just to escape some of the crime and problems and I think that's been going on for a long time and bonus areas here I I'm sorry I'm gonna zoom in but you can kind of start to see it's gonna load up all this chaotic information uh, but I got I add a lot of this just to kind of see some details. You can, um, I think the labels here. Um, so if I turn off these labels, I don't know, that doesn't really help. But uh, it, it's just nice to see where all these little restaurants are sometimes. And there's a little separate city down here. So the main problem I had with Argentina is just coming from Rio. I mean, it's, uh, it's really, really flat here. So, and it's... Uh, it just feels like a gigantic city. I, I used to live in Chicago. It feels a lot like Chicago, suburban Chicago kind of. But well, it was certainly very, it was it felt better than Chicago in some ways because it was totally new for me and all that. And I don't even remember exactly where I went, but um, stayed in a little youth hostel there. It was pretty pretty nice. Um, there's a little square area. I forgot what it's called, but um, but certainly this is a huge area. And I can even try to add the black marble on here. So you can kind of see this is. Uh, earth at night and uh, population distribution but it doesn't really help too much but anyway just to give you a basic idea um, and uh, I hope this has really helped um, and uh, you know there's just a ton of ways to uh, study study everything um, I'm not even 
trying to get this back to uh, looking at the whole earth here, but oh my gosh, we're upside down on the earth. What's happened here? Um, but yeah, there's a lot of ways to look at uh, what's been going on on earth. Um, I would say uh, it's great to look at a map like this upside down too, just to kind of see uh, what's really going on. And certainly, um, I hope there's a great future for Argentina. Um, you know, I'm a little biased on the positive side. I just always want places to do great. And uh, certainly, um, I'm interested because, you know, it's nice. You shouldn't really live in the Amazon. It's uh, this climate area it makes it pretty difficult, pretty hot, you know, and it means there's only so many places you can live in in South America. Um, and uh, of course, the population has kind of shifted. Uh, you know, certainly the largest cities you can kind of see here. This is one thing that we didn't really look at was kind of this other side of South America. I have some other studies that I've done, um, but certainly I'm very interested in Colombia and Panama is pretty interesting and just the whole Caribbean and kind of thinking about how this transitions. So this is a lot more uh, hilly and there's mountains. This is kind of a mountain range through here. This is the Andes and whatnot. But Anyway, so uh, there's a lot to think about. I hope uh, uh, you've got some interesting ideas. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, I mean, uh, I'm really interested in just what's uh, how the Earth works uh, as a whole. And, uh, you know, like Argentina, it just occurred to me that it's just on the tip here. And it's kind of almost like this Alaska. And where I'm up in Idaho, it's kind of heading out towards it's one of the most rural parts of America. A lot of trees and interesting thing so I just kind of was thinking wanted to kind of fill in some gaps of information um, particularly economically as well because I'd like to try to make a little money and even help out their economy um, but uh, uh, but anyway let me know uh, let me know what ideas you have and uh, uh, and uh, yeah let's 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 chat see you